Many hotels have had to let go staff as a result of the economic fallout caused by COVID-19. But could they have avoided this if they had managed their cash reserves well? I'm Kalila Reynolds and this is Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. Keep watching to find out more. I'm joined now by General Manager at Deja Resort. He's also Chairman of the Montego Bay Chapter of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, Robin Russell, to share his experience with managing cash reserves. Thanks for joining me, Robin. Great to have you on. So I heard about your experience there at Deja Resort. Uh, you were in conversations with Exim about cash flow, uh, cash reserve uh, troubles that you had. First of all, what are cash reserves? Um, cash reserves are what you put aside for in layman's term a rainy day. Um, you know, we, we've always tried to put a little bit aside, whether it's for future investments or in case of, you know, a need like this. Um, unfortunately, this need is, is, is a lot more than we could have been anticipated or expected. So it really has put us in a, in a bind. So is it that you didn't have enough cash reserves or it, how, how long did the reserves you have, how long were they able to last you? Well, you know, unfortunately we run a seasonal business. Um, right. Um, so we came out of the season pretty well, or, you know, you know, you did the December, you did January, February, you did half a March. So you did, you did well, you know, so we did have some money set aside and then usually you'll have a, a pretty decent summer and then your cash reserves are used up September, October, November when things are really slow. With everything changing and everything happening the way it's happening, you know, we've used our cash reserves in summer. We probably are not going to be making any money in summer or, or leading up to the slow months what's going to happen to us then, you know, it's, it's going to get even harder than where we are now. Mm -hmm. So tell what was your experience like managing the cash reserves though? Um, it is hard for people to comprehend that are not in the industry that we have zero revenue. You know, I don't think any business has ever gone to zero and not been closed. So, we're still open, we're still trying to be open, you know, we're still trying to figure out when do we open, when do we lay off staff, when do we, so we still have bills coming in, we still owe our suppliers, we're still trying to keep relationships there, but then you have zero revenue. But what's um, the point of staying open if you have no customers and nothing coming in? Well, there's certain things to a hotel you can't just close. So if you leave your rooms vacant, you get a mold problem or your AC problems. Um, you still have to have a cleaning staff. You still have to have security. Um, you're still getting reservations or people are inquiring online when the hotel will be open. People are still trying to book. So you still have to have somebody at, in reservation. So although you might be scaled down, you're never closed unless you really close the door. Mm, I see what you mean. And then on top of it, you know, you still have expenses. So um, because we're a large company, JPS still charges you a demand charge, um, which, you know, is, is still significant, um, even though you're using a half or a quarter of the power that you would normally use. How much have you had to scale down? So if you had how many X number of staff, where are you now? Well, um, I'll be totally honest, what the government did for us with the best cash and set cash program, we've used that to send home most of our staff. So it really, that has alleviated a lot of pressure off of companies like myself. So when we do have people coming in, you know, we'll give them a stipend for traveling of some sort and then pay them the day's pay. So we didn't lay off our staff at Asia we kept management on at 50% as well, because we do still have HR issues, accounting issues, um, maintenance issues, you know, like I said, so there's still work to be done uh, on the back end. 
and then you're not sure when you're going to close or when you can open back. So you're still just playing along, trying to trying to figure it out. How long did it take before you blew through the cash reserves that you had? Um, I would say we're on the last right now. So, um, you know, as of March, April, May, yeah. So by June, which is now, we're kind of on the last, where we're looking to try and get some financing to carry us through for the next three or four months or to the end of the year. So it means that when you have that slow period coming up, well, a slow period, we're already in a slow period, but when you have another slow period coming up after summer, what, that you mentioned, what, uh, September, October, November, you really won't have any reserves, will you? No. You know, typically, we, 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 when I go to my board and I show them a loss for September, October, November, it's an accepted loss. You know, it's just keep your costs low, Robin, you're allowed to lose X amount of money. Um, I don't even know what those losses will look like now. Um, you know, with, with the, we're not sure what the numbers will be with tourists coming, if they're going to come, you know, we're just with the speculation of travel. So it's been really hard and I'm not the only one facing this hardship because, you know, unfortunately, we still haven't been able to resolve some of that best care money. Um, in March, a lot of our cash flow got taken up because we had to pay taxes. Um, mm. You know, that was the end of the year for for us. Um, then you still had suppliers that needed to be paid. You still had um, guard taxes, room taxes, stuff of that nature that just needed to be paid. And, you know, we had to eat up a lot of cash flow doing that. What, what lessons have you learned from all of this? Um, I don't know. Um, it's just, um, I, I guess the safest word would be to read your insurance policies very well and try to insure for stuff, even if you don't think it is possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have insurance, I have business interruption insurance, but none of that helps because pandemics are, are not a part of that, of that um, policy. It wasn't covered. So is it a case where you, you try to apply for the insurance and they told you, no, this is not covered? Well, um, the minute you called your broker, the first thing they said was, Robin, read your policy. Pandemics are not a part of it. Um, so, and most policies um, don't have pandemic. I think there are only a couple of places that actually cater to that because it is a separate policy. But what I would say to everybody is look at trying to find some way to insure for, for unexpected things like this. Um, you know, this is the first time anything like this has ever happened, I guess, in the world where the whole world has literally shut down. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard to anticipate or plan for anything of this magnitude. I can, I can only imagine. Well, it's, it's a really, really difficult situation to, to have to go through. So what would you have done differently, if anything, over the past three months? Or maybe before, um, in terms of planning for it? It's hard to plan. I mean, we've been very prudent, and I think that's why we, although we are in a situation, we are not desperate right now. Um, but I would have said, you know, just look at your insurance. Um, we, we, we at our company always were looking for new stuff. So we never ex overextended ourselves. You know, we've been always kind of prudent in how we move forward. But, um, and I think that's where we are, but there are a lot of other companies that are, you know, just really struggling as we, as we speak. Are there things that you can do in managing that cash reserve? Because you've been able to, to make it stretch for these few months. How have you been able to accomplish that? Is it that you just had enough of a buffer there? But I'm sure you've had to, to make some adjustments to make it stretch, to make it last. I would tell anybody to have an open relationship with their partners that they're in. So um, on the onset, we had very good conversations with our financial institutions for loan moratoriums with our suppliers, especially the large ones, we, what we did was we told them that we would pay some money, but we couldn't pay them all the money. You know, just something to keep the account going and keep the account active. And we had just a very honest conversation with everyone. 
um, you know, because everybody is in the same boat and everybody kind of understands what's happening. So, you know, just we, we always answered our phones. We, we were just very open. Look, we can do this. We can't do that. And just kept our, what's the word? Cut all our expenses, unnecessary expenses, and kept going. You know, that's just about all we could do. Is there anything that you had to actually default on? Not yet. And hopefully um, that time does not come. And hopefully that time doesn't come. Um, we're opening in Monday. I mean, Deja, we actually are open now. You know, we're doing some corporate bed and breakfast kind of thing just to bring in some revenue. Um, but as of Monday, hopefully we'll be accepting some tourists from all over the world. Um, we're preparing our protocols and stuff. So with some revenue coming in, hopefully we will see this, you know, the back of this. Have you been getting bookings? We have, you know. Um, it's been very, you know, we even had bookings when flights weren't coming in. People are like, oh, we want to come to Deja. Well, there are no flights. Mm. So um, people have always just reached out trying to come to Jamaica um, and know that they have the opportunity. I think we're going to get a, a little bump, you know. Um, I don't think there are enough flights yet to see major hotels opening all of their properties, but it's going to start slow. And I think by the end of the year, we'll be almost 50, 60% of where we were last year. What's your plan for the rest of the year? Because clearly the, the industry is not going to completely recover immediately. And so you must have a plan for between now and December at least. Definitely. Um, it's, it's, we're going to call it an essential plan. So if something is an essential right now, we're just not going to do it. Um, you know, we had very, we had two very good years, 18, 19, where tourism did really well and we were a part of it. So we were almost looking at expansion, you know, looking at maybe getting something else somewhere, um, speaking to financial institutions to see if they liked our model. But now we're just in a, I would say, a, a more defensive mode, watching our expenses, keeping our cash flow very tight, um, and just managing our relationships. We're going to have to get back into the market and sell Deja as a safe place. So we will see where that goes. Mm. Well, I wish you all the best, Robin, there at Deja Resort. I know the, the borders are open now, and... We hope that you are able to make a, a fulsome recovery as soon as Thank possible. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you on this side. Okay. All right. Thanks, Robin. All right. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service. Check out their website, eximbankja.com, and follow them on social media at eximbankja. If this information has helped you in any way today, please spread the news and share with a friend. Our goal is to get to 50,000 subscribers this year. So like this video so that YouTube shows it to more people, subscribe to this channel, and turn on those post notifications. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.